Welcome to the Reviewing and Editing Data webinar with Mutation Survey Software. My name is Fuquin and I will be the presenter for this webinar. This webinar will focus on reviewing the data using tools in Mutation Surveyor after the analysis has finished. For all other questions, please refer to the individual webinars for more information. The first thing that I want to go over very quickly is how to import data and run the analysis. After the analysis is complete, you should review the data and edit variants if need be. You can edit or add substitutions, homozygous indels, and heterozygous indels. Then, use the project reviewer to view overlapping amplicons to see if there are any further discrepancy. The project reviewer also show all replicate samples in one contact as well as group them. This function makes it easier to view multiple samples in one window and observe the variations between them. Much like the project reviewer, the graphic display report offers a graphical view of the project. However, it does not show overlapping amplicons. The graphic display report allows you to verify the alignment and mutation calls for each sample. In addition, the project display report within the graphic display report will allow you to see the entire project in one window, with each sample aligning to their respective reference trace. And finally, we will discuss the Project File Extraction Tool, or SGP Extraction, as it is known in Mutation Surveyor, to extract specific components of a project file. These components can then be saved for future reference and reviewed again if necessary. To quickly review how to import data, I want to mention again that there are two ways that you can import data into the software. The first is to use the File drop-down menu and selecting the Open File option. The second way is to simply click on the folder icon located under the File tab. Both options will bring up the same Open Files dialog box. The GenBank file, Reference file, and Sample files are imported into this dialog box and into the software. After the analysis, the mutation table will show up, displaying all called mutation within the project. The color code are as followed. Purple background is a reported variant. Pink background indicate novel variant that changes the amino acid sequence. Blue text represent high confidence. Red text represent low confidence. And black text indicate confirmed variants. When reviewing the data, the low confidence mutation should be reviewed first. Double click on the mutation and the software will zoom in to that position. We will first examine mutation 4 in the table. As observed here in the main analysis window, this mutation cause seems to be a die blob. This type blob caused many other mutation calls that are currently grayed out. The grayed out mutations are recognized by Mutation Surveyor as illogical and is automatically deleted. You can turn off this function by going to the process setting and deselecting Allow Software to Delete Mutations under the Mutation tab. You can delete the die blob mutation call by right clicking on the mutation in the mutation table and select Delete Mutation. Going back to the mutation report, Mutation 4 no longer appears in the table. Now, we will examine the mutation at position 107,844. As observed in the main analysis window, the most likely reason that this mutation is flagged is because it was only called in one direction while the software applies two directional parameters to the variation. The data set contained both a forward and reverse sample, but in this case, the forward sample did not seem to align. One of the reasons is the quality of the raw trace. If it is too low, mutation surveyor cannot align it to the reference trace. We could check this theory by opening the unmatched folder and selecting the trace. Observing the raw trace of the forward sample, we can see that the quality is too low for mutation surveyor to correctly align this sample to the reference. Therefore, only the reverse trace is aligned and included in the analysis. However, since we are processing the data using bidirectional parameters, mutation calls in one direction is called at a lower confidence because of the set threshold in the software. You can resolve this issue by switching to the one directional analysis. By clicking on the icon, the software will now apply one directional parameters to the mutation call. As you can see now, the variation text is now color coded blue for high confidence. After applying the one directional analysis and you feel that this mutation is real, you can right click on the mutation and select confirm mutation. From this dialog box, 
You can also add comments in the mutation call. After confirming and adding comments, the font will turn black, indicating a confirmed variation, and the comments will also be added to the comments column in the mutation table. In addition to confirming and adding comments, Mutation Server gives you the ability to add substitution manually. Right click at the desired position in the Mutation Lecture Fairgram and select Add Substitution. An Add Substitution dialog box will appear. In this dialog box, you can enter the information to add a substitution to the Lecture Fairgram. The substitution can be entered in this field. The same dialog box will appear if you want to edit an existing mutation call. Right click at the mutation and select edit to open up the edit substitution dialog box with all the same field as shown here. In addition, this dialog box will also allow you to add various tags such as pathogenic, benign, or familial to the variation. Any editing or additional substitution will be recorded in this mutation table and correspond to the color coding scheme in the custom report. To learn how to add color coding to the custom report, please refer to the Custom Report Options webinar. To add a homozygous indel variation to a sample, simply hold down the control key and left click on the mobility line at the position you wish to add the indel. This will bring up an Add Indel dialog box. From the drop down menu, select either deletion or insertion. Heterozygous indels are more complicated and will be discussed in more detail later on. For now, we will only be focusing on the homozygous indels. Next, we will specify the start index of GenBank number by looking at the GenBank sequence. The position of the deletion is 79,630 to 79,632. The mutation letters CTT can be observed in both the reference and GenBank sequence. After adding all the necessary information, you can add additional comments about the mutation in the comment box and then click OK to add the variation to the project. After hitting OK, the main analysis window shows the mutation with a red horizontal bar on top of the position specified in the dialog box. Repeat the same procedure for the reverse strand and the red bar will also appear in the reverse trace. The mobility line also changed from green to red to indicate a homozygous indel event. In this example, the original deletion call made by the software was deleted just to show you an example of how to add a deletion event if needed. The procedure for adding a homozygous insertion is almost the same as with the homozygous deletion, but has a minor difference. You also start by holding down the control key and left clicking on the mobility line at the position you wish to add the homozygous insertion. This will bring up the same add indel dialog box. From here, you must select insertion in the mutation type drop down box. In the start index of GenBank field, the start and ending position of the variation will always be two consecutive number for an insertion event. The start position is the position before the insertion begins, and the ending position is the next position downstream. The length of the insertion is determined in the mutation letters field. For example, I entered the position 107,823 to 107,824 in the start index of GenBank field, and GAA, AAG as the mutation letters. This procedure is repeated for the reverse sample as well. After adding the insertion in both the forward and reverse sample, you can observe that the red horizontal bars now appear over the position specified, and the six base pair insertion in the mutation table is determined by the mutation letters, not the start index of JetBank. The mutation table will also have the Add it tag in the comment box to let you know that this variation was manually added. We will now move on to the heterozygous indel. Red horizontal bars and mobility line indicate homozygous indel. For heterozygous indel, a brown horizontal bar is the display marker. In this example, the brown indicator bars are not there to indicate the heterozygous indel variation. The heterozygous indel detection tool number the bases relative to the reference and not the GenBank number as with homozygous indel. So if there is ever a variation that you are interested in, you must first examine the desired base in the main analysis window and then look at the reference trace for both the forward and reverse strand to see what positions it is in. The position that I am interested in 
is 29,169 to 29,170 on a GenBank file and 387 to 388 on the reference trades for the forward strand. The reverse strand has a GenBank position at 29,166 to 29,167 with a reference position of 421 to 422. Click on the Head Endow Detection Tool icon in the toolbar to access the Head Endow Deconvolution window. The tool will try to deconvolute the mutant trace from the conserved trace. Clicking on the Mutation button will bring up the Mutation Edit dialog box. In the dialog box, make sure you select Heterozygous Deletion in the Mutation Type drop-down menu for a deletion event or Heterozygous Insertion for an insertion event. The first field that needs to be added is the Start Index of Reference field. The start of the head indel is number relative to the reference file and should be 387 to 388 and a TT deletion in the mutation letter field. The start numbering is the position of the first space to be deleted and the end number is the last deleted position. You can add additional comments about the mutation that you want to. Otherwise, click OK and the mutation will be added. Once you are done editing the reverse trace as well, the heterozygous indel indication will now appear. If you would like more information concerning heterozygous indel, please refer to the head indel detection webinar.